Hello and welcome to a pro patch breakdown here at LOL Class. Let's take a look at this week's changes. Malzar's passive is being changed to Void Shift, which means that if you haven't taken damage for a certain amount of time, uh, beginning at 24 seconds, you gain 90% damage reduction and CC immunity for one second after taking damage or blocking a CC effect. So it essentially means that uh, say you're roaming around the jungle and you meet someone in the jungle and he tries to kill you. It means you're going to take 90% less damage for say Zed jumping on you or a Fizz or a LeBlanc jumping on you. So it makes him a lot safer kind of roaming around the map and um, just getting around the jungle. Whereas before Mazahar was so mobile, any champion would just jump onto him and he would instantly die. Whereas Mazahar, if he got the opening on them, he would also kill them. So a little bit less um, volatile and risky in terms of map movement with that uh, new passive. His Q gets slightly lower cooldown, um, slightly less damage and AP ratio, and the silence is also lowered at max rank before it was a 3 second silence down to a 2 second silence, which is a pretty decent nerf. A 3 second silence is actually pretty ridiculous in the late game because it renders some champions completely unable to do anything for 3 seconds. They changed his W to Void Swarm, which I think will be pretty useful in lane in terms of just overall pushing the lane. I can see the Void Shift and his W being used really well against melee champions like Yasu or Fizz because it means that you're not taking constant harass with the passive. So it's much like the Malphite passive where you want to continuously harass Mazahar so he doesn't go into Void Shift and uh, you won't be able to jump him. So against melee champions, he can use his Voidlings really well. He can also use his passive really well. So I could see him being a counterpick to some melee mages. Mazahar's E, the damage and AP ratio is also lowered, um, but it does get refreshed if Mazahar uses Q or R on the target. So if you get poisoned down on someone, again, this is very easy against a melee champion to land your Q after already getting the poison on them. Uh, last but not least, his ulti doesn't have a base damage anymore, but it creates this zone, just like the old W that does percentage damage uh, under the target for five seconds. I think overall, Mazahar is either going to be used as a counterpick to certain melee champions, I potentially even Mazahar top, uh, or at least in solo queue, or he might even be a jungler because his clear speed is pretty ridiculous with the Voidlings. Overall, I'm not really sure exactly how Malzahar is going to turn out. I'm definitely going to have to try to play him some games myself to see if he's going to be fit for mid lane or somewhere else. The changes brought to Annie are actually an upgrade, I think. Her main weakness in the past month were that she was really weak on lane. She was super squishy and against the meta uh, tanks, uh, she would get bullied. But thanks to her range and her damages, you have the ability to be able to burst down a target. The W got nerfed because you cannot like instant stand anymore, but it doesn't really matter because when you go to the late game, you most likely flash t burst with the ultimate, which is instant. So you don't really have uh, the reaction to flash away. Regarding the shield, I think it's a huge upgrade because the damage reduction is actually huge, especially when it comes to mid late game. When you're a support, you're really under level compared to the mid laner. If their mid laner is an assassin, then he can just one shot you and thanks to her shield, she can reduce a lot of the damages and usually as a support, you max the shield as a second spell after a W. So you will be way tankier before in the past when you were playing Annie, you were just engaging and then with the flash, you would just flash in, but then if you don't get like two or three people in your stand, then you would just die instantly afterwards. Um, regarding the tibers, uh, it's going to be really interesting. Before, you maybe didn't have to control the tibers that much, even though as a support it's different because uh, tibers and the W is the main source of damages, so you always had to control uh, the tibers. But now it's going to be even more interesting. You're gonna deal more damages and is going to bring way more burst potential. We might see her again in a competitive play. Annie's W now has a 40 more range, but it was a bug before where you could flash W someone or W someone, they would flash, but they would still get the stun off. So Riot has fixed that bug, but they increased the range by a little bit. So I think it's not too big of a deal, unless you're relying on these like level two all in cheese. Annie's E has a lower duration, doesn't give armor or MR, but it reduces the damage it takes by quite a bit up to 40%, which is actually really good in the late game. The biggest change by Annie is her Tibbers. They're reducing the overall damage of the 
initial burst and also Tibber's auto attacks, but Tibber's not has an enrage that gives him 275% attack speed and 100% movement speed, decaying over 3 seconds when Annie uses her ulti, when Annie dies, and when she stuns a champion using her passive. This basically means that every time you get a stun on someone, or every time you use your ulti, uh, Tibber's just gonna go crazy and do a lot of damage. And Annie's overall damage output in a team fight or when she's bursting someone is gonna be more reliant on using Tibber's, which makes sense because before people always just thought about the initial crazy burst from Tibber's, but no one really used the bear for anything useful afterwards. First of all, they're buffing Zara's movement speed and base HP, which kind of helps her with being just a really immobile, squishy mage running around the map and it's just really risky for Zyra to ever really leave lane or ever really play against an assassin or a bruiser that could jump onto her. Uh, she would just die instantly and this should help a little bit. 15 movement speed is actually a pretty decent buff. Um, her passive now spawns seeds randomly around you, up to 8 seeds, which should help Zyra's lane quite a bit because you're not only reliant on using your W and it kind of forces people to be playing around these seeds and either they have to walk over them to kill the seed but as they're walking over them if you get your ability off first either rooting them or just spawning a plant they're just going to be taking a lot of free damage so they're reducing the plant health down to two ticks now but it increases with the w passive uh this is actually i'm not sure if it's too big of a buff because you're still going to be leveling your w last most likely so that means that for the majority of the game or at least until level 14 your plants are going to have two hp which is just two auto attacks whereas before i believe it was three or four so it's actually going to be easier to kill Zyra's plants for the majority of the game, but late game she's going to be stronger. Her Q is more of a rectangle instead of a round ability, which is going to make it a lot easier to land. They are nerfing the damage and AP ratios by a bit. So I think the only way you can really make this new Q better than the old one is by landing it on multiple people, which should be very possible in a team fight, or at least you can use it to cut off a path. Uh, it should be a pretty good zoning ability. And it's also going to help a lot for clearing minion waves since it's such a big AoE. Again, her W doesn't give cooldown reduction now and it increases the plant's HP by up to 50%. Something to note is also that the seeds from her W give vision in a small area and visions of enemy champions for 2 seconds if they step on it. So you can use it to scout bushes, you can use it to even scout Baron over a wall if you don't have any wards. It's just going to be very useful for pretty much never having to face check any bushes in the game, which is really beneficial for Syra being such an immobile champ. Her E doesn't really have any changes, and her ulti now does 150% increased damage rather than getting 50% attack speed. This kind of makes Zyra's damage more art reliant, and our ult already has a really long cooldown, so it's going to make her way more explosive in teamfights with more AoE damage, uh, stronger plants, and plants that are harder to kill in the late game. So I think this means Zyra's teamfighting is going to be better, uh, Zyra's late game is going to be a lot better, but it might be a bit easier to play around her in the laning phase once you get the hang of the seed passive. Brand's biggest change is the detonation on the passive that does percentage uh, max HP after landing three of your abilities in a row. Um, but overall, they're reducing the stun duration on his Q, the damage on his Q, W, E, and R, and the AP scaling of three of them. So they're reducing his overall damage by a lot with the addition of the passive explosion as well as his ult having a slow. Overall, I think this actually makes Brand even worse of a champion, even though he was already a pretty weak mage before. Um, maybe he'll be killing tanks slightly faster because he has more percentage damage. Even before, he was doing 8% damage over 4 seconds, and now he just ends up doing um, maybe around 16 to 18%. So the percentage damage increase is there, but maybe 10%, but you're reducing his overall base damages and AP ratios by a lot, so I don't think the change will make up for it. First of all, Cassio is getting a lot of stat changes. They're buffing her base movement speed, base health, base mana, base armor, pretty much just all of her base stats making her an overall uh, stronger champion from the get-go. They are changing her Q slightly by increasing the mana cost, but lowering the cooldown. Cassio either way builds a lot of mana with Tear of the Goddess, so it's not going to be too big of an issue. They're also upping both the AP ratio and the um, damage. The biggest change to Cassio is probably her Miasma, which would be a huge area of effect poison on the ground and different than before it grounds enemies which means that they can't use movement abilities like Vi's Q like any kind of dashes basically can't be used in Miasma you can't flash while you're in it so it just locks people down really nicely and you can throw out your Miasma and then use your ulti people can't flash your ult and people can't escape it so I think the Miasma or her W is going to be a really interesting ability and it'll have high impact on competitive play they also may change the twin fang where the cooldown is permanently lower to 0.9 seconds uh, whereas before it was 5 seconds and if they weren't poisoned, uh, 
the cooldown would be 5 seconds. If they were poisoned, it would be reduced to 0 0.9 seconds. So, this means that she's a bit easier to play if you mess up your combo with the poison. Even though you get less damage in the new Cassiopeia, you don't get punished by not having your E up for 5 seconds. Even though if you E without having the poison on them, it does a significantly less amount of damage and you don't get any self heal, uh, it is a lot less punishing and you can make mistakes on Cassio without completely messing up, uh, messing up your DPS in a team fight. They changed Cassio's passive from giving her a lot of free AP and CDR to giving her free movement speed without having to buy boots. It kind of makes up for the lack of AP that you were getting because now you can just buy a complete extra item make up for it. And it just means that Cassio doesn't have to buy boots at any point in her build. That's going to buff her late game even more because it means you can just have 6 damage items. There is no downside. One of the bigger changes is that Vokos ulti no longer applies deconstruction, his passive, that does true damage. But instead, they buffed his base damage slightly and his AP ratio on the ulti also lowered the cooldown and if you research an enemy which is just hitting your passive hitting three abilities uh, it researches them for seven seconds and your ult will do 100 percent true damage overall versus squishies this is not going to help too much because a lot of the damage that you were getting onto the squishies is actually from your passive which did a lot of damage and you would proc it about twice i believe with your ultimate but versus tanks it's going to be really really easy to research them it's just hitting your w your rift and your q then they're already researched and then you do 100 percent true damage and you can burn a tank really fast so they're kind of changing what vilkaz does rather than before he was excellent at hitting a q and just one shotting a squishy whereas now he's going to be really good at killing the front line and bursting down their tank much faster than you can burst down um his team's tanks which is pretty useful in the current meta because there are a lot of tanks in the top lane and sometimes in the jungle also another good thing is that when you're using your ulti towards the tank, it is a large laser, so you can't be you can be hitting both the tanks and some of their backline members as well, or at least putting a threat on them and forcing them to reposition. His Q also refunds 50% of the mana cost per unit killed, and you can kill up to three units with the um, the Q, so you can get 100% of your mana back. But actually, one of the lesser talked about really interesting changes I think is that the target indicator is only visible for Vilkos. This means that when you're playing Vilkos against players that don't play Vilkos as much and they don't know the exact range of your Q, they're not going to know exactly how to dodge it because before they could see the indicator and they could say, oh, I just need to dodge a little bit past this and I'll be safe. But if you don't have that exact range in your head playing against a Vilkos, uh, it's going to be really hard for you to dodge his Q, which is already an extremely hard ability to dodge. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun playing Vilkos and seeing people attempt to dodge his ability over and over. They're changing Zerath's done to be slightly less in close range and slightly longer at max range, uh, which I think is a good refinement for Zerath to be good against a lot of range champions or good when he's really far away from the opponent, whereas if they get close to you, uh, the stun is going to be pretty next to nothing. Riot removed the two second stun, I believe, a year or two ago, but if you get the max range stun, it really sets you up to land the rest of your abilities really easily. They're also changing the ulti so it goes up to 5 shots on max rank and 4 shots on the second rank. So you're going to have more ultis, but they're going to be doing slightly less damage. The first rank does slightly more damage, but the last rank does slightly less, but you have more shots overall. So I think it just pretty much means that the more ultis you're landing, uh, it'll be a buff, but if you only land one or two, then it's going to be a slight nerf. So the better Zerath players that can stand from afar, land more ultis, it's going to be a slight buff. Overall, I don't think it's going to change Zerath in terms of pro play too much. Uh, maybe combined with Rylai's, you can hit all four or all five or four ultis in a row using the Rylai slow. But other than that, I think it's pretty inconsistent to be able to hit all five at the max rank. Also, they're doing so, it zooms out your slightly as you're using your ult, much like using Jin's ultimate, which should help landing your ulti by a decent amount, but I don't think it'll be too big of a change, personally. Brian decided to nerf Anivia's AP ratio on Q as well as the base damage, but the stun and slow scales with ranks, so you end up getting more CC off your Q, but less damage. Her E missile speed got increased, uh, and the range got decreased slightly. Uh, I really think the E missile speed is kind of to make up for an earlier nerf that Riot did, whereas your passive that doubles the damage on your E is applied for a less amount of time, so you have a less amount of time for your E to land and still do dummy damage, but with the increased missile speed, it kind of makes up for it. Whereas before, there was some times where you would get your E off, but the passive would time out just before, so you would only get uh, half of the amount of damage. 
So I really think this is a step buff that they should have done previously, and it just it just kind of evens out Anivia's um, E into ulti combo from where it was previously around Worlds. But then they also decided to nerf the ulti that starts at 150 radius instead of a 400 radius, and now it goes up to 400. So it starts by being less than half as big as before and going up to the normal size after three seconds. Uh, it does slow and do more damage up to 50%. Uh, when it's fully charged, but I think it is definitely a nerf because a lot of the time you don't really end up just putting down your ulti and having this zone for an extended amount of time. <clears throat> it's going to be really, really situational and it's probably only going to be good against comps that have a ton of melee champions where you can put down your ulti. But if the fight ever kites away from your ultimate or away from where you put down your ultimate, then you're going to have to stop using it and recast this from rolls. It's kind of like Heimerdinger's turrets where you think a fight is going to start, you put down your Heimerdinger turrets, and then the fight moves somewhere else, and you have to move your turrets. But then again, your turrets aren't up, or in Anivia's case, your ult is weaker, it's smaller, it does less damage, and it slows less. So for very certain scenarios, team fights that are really drawn out with a lot of melees that are running around into ulti, she's going to be stronger, but for the majority, it's going to make her more inconsistent. They're buffing Swain's passive a little bit to give a tiny bit more mana, but overall, the biggest changes come from the rest of his abilities. Swain's Q has a 6 seconds higher cooldown at rank 1 and 2 seconds higher at max rank and it does double damage against minions but the way they've changed it is that you put down your bird in an area and it focuses champions or whoever is hit by your E but if someone walks out of that range it'll still continue to hit other people within its range so it's pretty much the same as before except it has a longer cooldown it does double damage to minions and it's gonna stay so if you put down your Q in a team fight and your target that you put it on runs away, uh, it'll still be doing damage to whatever other targets that are in that zone. So, in terms of wave clearing and in terms of team fighting, this will benefit Swain a bit, but the increased cooldown uh, kind of hurts his early game because his Q is an essential part of his trade along with his E. Uh, they're nerfing the mana cost on W slightly, but I do think that they nerfed the W damage a couple patches ago or a couple months ago kind of just out of the blue when Swain wasn't even a power pick so the never move mana cost is not too big of a deal uh, but it, it does help that they removed or reduced the mana cost on W as well as buff the passive. His E is going to do quite a bit less damage but have a higher AP ratio so it's going to be doing higher damage later in the game and it also has a higher damage amplification at the early levels. This pretty much just means that Swain is going to be a bit more reliant on his Q and his ult damage whereas you would just constantly be spamming torment your E as your trade previously. They are changing Swain's ulti so he has five ravens instead of three which means that he's going to have more ravens coming out and going to be doing more overall damage in his ulti but they're reducing the healing and upping the cooldown so overall it means that Swain has slightly better wave clear with his Q and slightly better trades when he uses his ulti but overall I really don't see Swain getting any better with these buffs. They're changing Cinder's passive so when the Q is maxed it increases the Sphere's lifespan to 8 seconds and the W you can grab 2 additional Spheres so you can grab up to 3 uh, this probably means that Riot wants you to max your W second, which means you can pick up more balls, and they're also reducing the cooldown of your E scattered a week at rank 1. So, it's just an incentive to keep your E at rank 1 and max your W. They are buffing the AP ratio on the Q slightly to try to make up for the damage nerf, because previously it would do, I believe, 15% true damage when your Q is maxed. So this does mean that Syndra will be doing slightly less damage, but it does mean that she's going to have a lot more zone control, her balls will be up longer, she can grab multiple balls and get bigger stuns or multi-man stuns. So I think Cinderella is going to be slightly less oppressive in terms of just flashing onto someone and one-shotting them or hitting one Q in lane and someone being just chucked out of lane at level 9. Uh, but it's going to give her a lot more opportunities to pick people, get AoE stuns and teamfights. So I think this gives her a better niche, whereas before she was just uh, kind of an immobile one-shot mage where if you got in her range, she would one-shot you, but if you jumped on her first, she would instantly die. So it's really interesting. To start off on Fiddlesticks, he gets a new passive that gives him move speed whenever he stops moving for a little bit. Basically just means that, you know, when he's draining people after he finishes the drain, he can either chase them again or run away. Feel a lot better, I think, and it'll just help him out quite a bit. Now they also reduce the range on his Q by 50. I think especially for support hurts him quite a bit. And now his W, the cooldown happens at the end of the channel rather than on the cast, and the cooldown is greatly reduced, which basically just means that if you're canceling it early, you're going to have it up a lot faster than before. Now his E gets two more bonuses and prioritizes better, which is quite nice. Basically, 
all of these changes just seem like they're gonna make Fiddle feel like a lot better. All right, so Viger, they basically just added. So now that when you hit spells with any of his abilities, you get AP as well, which basically makes it so that you don't always have to use your Q to just like less hit the creeps to be maximally efficient in lane. You also want to harass them, you get the same benefit. And it also means that for support, who aren't going to be last hitting stuff at all, they're going to get just a lot of AP just from, you know, trading in lane. So I, I think primarily this is going to be a buff to Viger support because it, it, it actually will help him quite a bit. He'll get like an extra 50 more free AP or something just from laning phase, which is huge. And then his ult was changed to instead of doing more damage based on their or how big their AP ratio is. He gets a bunch of extra damage based on how much HP they're missing. So it's like a finishing off move rather than just a target towards AP casters, which I think is just basically a buff for Viger both mid and bot since it basically makes him less of a counter pick and more of just like a, a fine pick all the time. And since he's always going to have targets who are low HP, it makes it just a lot more usable. I think just better. All right, so they also lowered the mana cost on all four of his spells, but they also took away his old passive, which gave him a bunch of extra mana. So I think it's going to basically be about the same. He might have a bit more of mana issues since his old passive was pretty strong. It gave him a ton, ton of mana, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal. His mana costs don't seem that bad, so he should be fine. And that's it for this Pro Patch Breakdown. Thanks for watching, and for more League of Legends content featuring the pros, make sure to visit lowclass.com.